Okay, before we move on to annotation, let's just have a quick recap of what we just did. Um, let's create a second layout in this drawing uh, using the first one as the basis for the second one. So I'm going to move this up slightly so you can see what's happening. Okay, if I right click the layout tab and do move or copy, I want to create a copy of that layout and move it to the end. If you create a copy, then you don't have to set up half as many of the uh, the settings. They're, they're done for you. So I'll click OK. OK, let's go to, this, go to the second of the layouts. Notice there seems to be no change because they're identical. It's a, a copy of the layout. So right click the second one and let's rename it. And let's say I'm wanting to create an A1 now. Let's say there'll be an A1 version of the drawing and an A3 version, which is quite common. Okay, so it's renamed. Now if I click off it and then right click it again, I can get Page Setup Manager. And we go to Modify. Okay, I'm going to keep the Adobe PDF because I don't have a printer big enough to create an A1. But I choose a different paper size and everything else stays the same. It's as simple as that. Click OK and close. Okay, so something's looking different. Let's bring this back down because I don't need to show that again. Uh, we seem to have more paper now, but the viewports have stayed the same size and in the same position. So I want to see the whole sheet of the paper now. So the best thing to do is zoom all. So it's Z return A return. So you can see now we've got a lot more paper to play with. So that's a 1 to 500 sitting on an A1. And that's how big it would be. So let's say we just wanted one viewport in this view. I can delete this one. So just click its edge and press delete. Now we can get this drawing to be a bigger scale. So if we enlarge the viewport first, that will help. And then go into the viewport. So you double click inside the viewport edge click and hold your middle mouse button and you can set roughly center the contents okay down here on the viewport scale selector I don't have 1 to 200 I could add it as a custom scale easier way to do it is just to type in what you need so in the command prompt it's a Z zoom command so it's Z return 1 forward slash 200 XP. Press return and it appears to zoom in but it's zoomed to scale. Click and hold your middle mouse button, don't roll it and you can reposition the contents. You can see down here we have a nice round number 1 divided by 0 0.005 is 200 so it's a 1 to 200. Double click outside the viewport and the contents are safe. Dead easy, isn't it? Once you get that first one, you can use it as a basis for the rest of your layouts. Different layout could be to a different plotter, a different printer, or file type, or whatever. So we're going to add some annotation back on our A3 drawing. Okay, now the annotation is just general text. And so we're going to use a font called Arial everybody probably knows uh, but we won't what we do is we we lock Arial inside a style and this gives us a bit more control especially when we're bringing things from drawing from one drawing to another if you if you use the, the, the standard style then there's a good chance you might end up with your text changing fonts so if we give this an, a name that's kind of uh, individual to our company or or you know working method then it's going to be a bit more controllable so if you we start the command with st so we're defining a new style that's going to hold our text so st return i want a new style i'm going to call it dims bit of a strange name but i want to use it for my dimensions later on as well it'll all come clear in the end so click okay 
I am going to use Arial, so I'll just keep that as it is. Style regular. Don't change the height, because if you do, you'll lock it to a height. This makes things less flexible. Width factor is a useful thing. It allows you to squeeze a bit more text into the same space. So if I hit it at 0.8, you see the text kerns and squashes up. But we'll keep it at 1 just now. Upside down and backwards, not really relevant here. And an obliquing angle is pretty similar to setting italic. OK, let's set current. And then we'll close. But just before I close, watch out for this. Annotative means that this text style would only show up in viewports that are set to a certain scale. Now our text is going in paper space anyway, so it's it's really not as relevant. But watch out for it. Annotative crops up in a few areas of the software now, and it's in an, in an office setup where it's managed very carefully. It would be excellent, but generally I would avoid setting anything to be annotative. Okay, close. Right, we'll be adding our text onto into paper space. We want the text to be on a layer that we can control. So we want to create a new layer and we'll call it titles. I'm going to make the text black so I can see it on screen. Okay. Now when you're using a true type font, the the pen width doesn't actually come into it. It draws it as a graphic effectively. So the color of the layer isn't as essential when it's a true type font. Okay, I don't want it dash dot though. That wouldn't be very look very good. So we want continuous line type for the layer. And just checking that the printer icon is on, otherwise we won't see it. So titles is ready to go. Make it current with the green tick and then close the dialog box. Okay, you can add text to a drawing in a couple of ways. Individual lines, simple, you know, individual words, identifying the rooms, etc. could be DT, that stands for dynamic text. Bigger chunks of drawing are best to use MT, which is multi-line text. And that has a few advantages. Obviously, you can you can change the shape of the the way the text is is sitting on the page. You can adjust the column width, and the text will lengthen accordingly. And also, you can use a, a mask so that the text can actually sit on top of the drawing, and it will hide what's underneath it. So that's quite useful with uh, with placing text. So we'll start with dynamic text because it is the simpler of the two. So let's just put in a, a couple of main titles here for these items. So we start the command with dt and return. OK, it's saying that currently the text height is 2.5. Well, that's not too bad, a bit small though. But it's firstly asking me where do I want to start my text. So I'm going to click just here, just alongside the plan. OK, and it says, do you want to go with 2.5 mil or do you want a different height? Let's make them a bit bigger. Let's go for 4 millimeters. And the rotation of the text, if I wanted to line up with something, I could. I could just angle, pick the angle I want to use. But if you want just horizontal text, just press return for angle zero. And then we type in what we want. So let's have uh, plan detail, press return to go down one line. Let's say of office. OK. And I want to mark the scale of this because it's different to the other scale in the other viewport. So let's say scale 1 to 75. And press return twice to finish the piece of text. Now it would look a bit nicer if this piece of text wasn't the same size as the main title. So let's move it to the side a wee bit and then do change. So ch return, pick the piece of text and I could change what it says here, but what I want to do is change its height. So let's say this one is going to be 2.5 millimeters. So you type in the height you want and press return. Notice here you could justify the text left, right, or whatever you want. You can change the justification from the default, which is bottom left. 
Okay, press return, the check the text shrinks slightly. Close the change properties box and let's zoom in and press escape. There's a bit of a big gap there, so let's move that upwards. So M return, put ortho on, pick the piece of text and return. I'm picking a base point clear of anything else. I don't want to accidentally pick anything. And just slide it up until you get a nicer spacing. Okay, now text has what's called an insertion point. So if I wanted to, to say, continue this text uh, further down, but I, I'd need to get back onto the, the line spacing that's here. So what I'll do is add the insertion point to my object snaps. So right click the, the button, settings, insertion. Okay. So we'll start the command again, DT, return. And when I hover over the text, you see a different type of object snap marker appear. It's the insertion point. So I pick the insertion point, left click, keep the height the same, so press return, rotation the same, press return. Now I'm on line with that piece of text. So press the return key to move, uh, pre actually I'm pressing space. And when you're in text mode, the space bar acts as a space. Okay, so that was one space, press return, goes down a line, space, return, okay. And then I could say uh, level six plan and return again. Okay, now I'm going to move this title further away, but just to show you that this is now on the same line spacing as these two. This one was changed on purposely. Let's copy this little piece of text down to below this one, but it, it will so that it's in the same relative position. So it's CP return. Pick the piece of text and return, but use the insertion point of the line of text above it. Then go down to the level six plan note and try and find the insertion point and select it. Then press return to stop. So both of these little bits of text are in the same relative position, it's nice and tidy. All we need to do is modify this one now because the other, the main plan is actually at one to 500. So if you just double click the piece of text, you can change the end bit to 500, press return to stop. Okay, now all I need to do is move these two pieces of text. So I've got them both selected press return, take your row snaps off and take ortho off. Well, if they wanted to be in line, I could keep ortho on. So my base point could be here and the text is moving down in line. There's a, there's a mark, there's a marker next to my cursor that's kind of hiding it, but you see there it's in line and I could place it down there. Okay. So that's dynamic text. It's very useful for just annotating individual rooms and the likes. Let's stick in a, a chunk of multi-line text now and we'll get that from the the small paragraph inside the the folder. So if we go to the AutoCAD course folder there's matthew.txt okay if I double click that okay I can copy and paste the text from here. Now if it isn't showing with word wrap on make sure it does because you'll see You've got word wrap and it's like one huge long line. That's not much use when we copy and paste it. So you want format, word wrap. And just make sure it's adjusting the way it should. So highlight it all and copy it. Control C. Let's just keep it open just in case we need to come back to it for a second. And then we use the multi-line text command. So it's MT. Now this is a wee bit tricky. This takes a bit of getting used to. Okay, and we click and drag to create a box for the text to go into. Okay, a second click there to accept the, the size of the box. Everything starts coming to life. I've got a strange looking device here with a ruler, um, but I can't see any text in there yet. It's going to use a text height of four millimeters. 
that was the last text height I used. That's okay. That should be we should be able to fit it in. So if we use Control V, the text appears. Now click and highlight it, and let's make this text a bit smaller. Let's change it to a height of 2.5. Okay, if you're happy with that, then you close the text editor. Otherwise, you've got lots of other settings that you can tweak, similar to a word processor. But we're just going to close the text editor. Okay, so my piece of text is there. Let's move that. Let's just click on it and see what happens. For starters. Now, keep your object snaps turned off when you do this, because it can cause problems with the shapes of the text box. So if I if I click on the the text box, you see I've got some arrows here, which control the the shape of the column. So if I make the column narrower, you see it gets taller. Okay. Now press escape, and I'm going to move that text box. So M return, pick the text and return, and let's bring it down into this gap. Looks reasonably tidy there. I'll take ortho off so I can center it a bit better. Now let's push it over the plan and see what happens. Okay, a bit difficult to read the text there with the background of the lines and it would be even worse when it printed out because it would be all the black lines obscuring my text. So one thing you can do with, with multi-line text that you can't do with D-text if you, if you double click the text and find this icon here which is background mask I want to use a background mask but use the drawing background color which is white okay if you want to bring the attention to something you could have a color there instead okay click OK and you see that the text box obscures what's behind it so that's pretty neat pretty useful if you're wanting to place a piece of text in the middle of a hatch pattern, for instance. Okay, close the text editor and that stays put. And if we move the text box, you see that it masks out wherever it is. That's a pretty neat feature. Okay, now we've annotated our drawing in model space in sorry, in paper space. Because if we if we put it in model space, whatever would be readable here wouldn't be readable in this viewport, um, and that's basically why we try and keep all the annotation in paper space so it's all a consistent size and things look much tidier. Okay, I think that's enough of an intro to uh, to text and annotation.